Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of encephalocele or meningoencephalocele. A 20 years old female patient came with amenorrhea for more than 4 months. She had gone through an ultrasound scan and suspecting congenital anomalies, she was sent to us for further evaluation. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see we have measured the femoral length and it corresponds to around 16 week of gestation. We couldn't find any proper view of bipartal diameter measurement and if you see here on the right image, this is the kernel section of the face. These are the orbits and on primary impression it looks like a case of anencephaly. You also can see a cystic area adjacent to the head region both on right and left images. So it took our attention for further evaluation. Let's see on real time. Here on real time you can see a complex cystic area which is an outward herniation of the brain matter along with fluid and meningeal covering. It is connected to the cranial cavity via a defect at the parato-occipital region. If it was a case of exencephaly, there should not be any covering like this containing some fluid and brain matter. The overall spine looks quite normal, though we expected to get some congenital anomalies at the cervical or lumbar region, which is very common, but at this gestational age, it was not easy to understand. Here again the face and you can see the outward herniating complex cystic area containing brain, fluid and obviously the meningeal covering. So this is a case of encephalocele or meningoencephalocele. Here is a high frequency view and you can see the calvarial bones are present. We have got a defect and through it the brain matter is herniating outwards with some fluid and obviously the meningeal covering. Again, another contrasty image from the fetal echo preset. Here is the occipital region and you can see this encephalocele quite well visualized, having communication with the intracranial structure. Here is a picture of the complex cystic area having communication with the intracranial part. Another picture, this is the skull bones which are present and adjacent to it you can see the complex cystic area in a magnified image. On the right image you can see the facial region, these are the orbits. If it was a case of anencephaly then you won't see these bones above the orbits. Due to herniation of the CNS contents outside, the head became smaller. So this is not a case of anencephaly, rather it's a microcephaly due to herniation. Again another picture and you can see the brain matter is herniating outside. Another picture of the encephalocele. This is the picture of the spine which looks quite normal. Here is again another picture and you can see this encephalocele here. 
now we have tried to take a 3d ultrasound picture make sure this is not taken using a volumetric four dimensional transducer rather it was taken with a regular curvilinear transducer swiping from one side to another manually so this is the head region and this is the shoulder of the baby and you can see there is a defect at the paratoxypetal region and the brain matter is herniating outside having a covering let's see some other 3d pictures of this case Here is again the herniated structure you can see here. This is the head region. And the pictures you can see from different angles. This is the posterior aspect of the head. There is no skin defect over the spine. So, in summary, the fetal head is a small, suggesting microcephaly. There is an outward herniation of the brain matter along with fluid and meningeal covering from a defect at the paratoxypetal region of the cranium, suggesting it as a case of meningoencephalocele or encephalocele. Now the take-home message. About in 50% of cases, there should be some additional congenital anomalies. So don't forget to look for them. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.